Why, I don't believe this. You're out running on the most important morning of our lives. Look at you, you're sweating. <gasps> Want to change your mind? Jog over here, let me decide. Oh, what the hell, I'll go through with it. You're an honorable man. I think I'd better take a shower now. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. You bounced in here saying hi to me as if you were expecting me. How'd you do that? Uh, elementary, my dear Ross. Your car is parked in front of the house. I deduce that you used your own little key to get in the door. Yeah, I did. Listen, before I say I do this afternoon, how many other men have the key to this house? Hundreds. Actually, the only one I can think of offhand is Ron. Ron, who has a crush on you, has a key to this house? Yes. He reminded me yesterday. Look, I, uh, I really think that it's best if I go take a shower before you do change your mind and cancel out on me. Okay? Uh, well, wait a minute. I was really impressed with all these gifts when I walked in here. Huh? Yeah, they're terrific. Yes, particularly this little trinket from Vanessa. <laughs> well, I certainly liked it a lot better than the framed front page of the journal. Oh, yeah, me too, but uh, don't become too honored. This is Vanessa's standard wedding gift. She gives them to distant cousins, upstairs maids. I think she buys them wholesale. Good for her. I'm going to take a shower now, pal. All right. Oh, wait a minute. You have to make me a promise. Anything. Never, ever serve me dinner out of Vanessa Chamberlain's sterling silver chafing dish. You got it. What are you looking for? Oh, that waffle iron that we got as a wedding present. Bert gave me a great recipe, and I want to try it out if we have people over after the reception. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's downstairs in the garage. I'll look for it later on. Oh. You know, we should put this in the garage. It takes up so much room, and we never use it. Well, uh, since Ed and Vanessa aren't seeing each other anymore, I don't know. Maybe we can pawn it. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you know... You know, I have to tell you, we're getting a little social here, Mrs. Nelson. I mean, uh, New York High Life, uh, Ross's bachelor party, Carrie's shower, Josh's party last night, the wedding today, and now after the reception, you want to have people over? I like having people around, don't you? Well, sure, yeah, I like it too, but I also like being alone with my wife every once in a while while I'm awake enough to enjoy it. You look pretty awake right now, don't you think? Yeah. How long do you have to, you have to go back to work? 45 minutes. Well, I was going to make you an omelet, <laughs> but it, it looks like we just don't have enough time. You know, I think you're absolutely right. Coffee or juice? Hmm, I love coffee. In a container. Thanks. I must say, it turned out just the way I wanted it to. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of the reception that Daddy gave Gerald and myself. Oh, it was so beautiful, so elegant, so posh. This is very nice. Simple and enchanting, just like Carrie. What are you doing here so early, anyway? <clears throat> oh, well, I got up early because I wanted to have breakfast with my dear father, but the hotel clerk said he'd left the hotel. I don't know where he went. Where's Mark this morning? Mark got up at the crack of dawn to have an appointment with Hope to figure out about that apartment he wants to rent. You know, for appearances' sake. Well, did you try Henry at the office? Yes, I did, and uh, I couldn't find him. He's being so secretive these days, and all I want to do is make plans so that we can drive to the wedding uh, with him. But Daddy keeps saying, well, just forget about me and you go on with Mark alone. What's so wrong with that? Nothing. Well, you know that I was very much in love with Ross once, and I know the only reason that I'm being asked to the wedding is out of courtesy, because Ross wants Daddy and Mark there, and, well, it's just for moral support, because when I walk in that church, I want to have Daddy on one side and, and uh, Mark on the other. Vanessa. Listen, I'm sure that when you walk into that chapel, all those old feelings will go away, and We'll get right into the spirit of things. Yes. Good. Um, look, I'm going to be late. I promised Jackie that I would stop by and go over the seating arrangements one more time before we do the place cards. 
Fine, darling, you go on ahead. I'm just going to stay here and take a few minutes and get into the spirit of things. Okay. Go on. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. intruder coming here on your wedding day, Rose. Uh, I uh, have a problem which only you can help me with. Oh, well, I'll try. And you're not intruding at all, Henry. Carrie's taking a shower. He's just sitting around looking at the wedding presents. Oh, well, I see. Vanessa sent her standard so uh, trading dish. Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, sit uh, down, please. Thank you. Actually, uh, part of my problem involves Vanessa. Well, then uh, perhaps I'm the wrong person to be talking to. Oh, no, 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 no. It only involves her indirectly. You see, after... Everything that you two had been through. It never occurred to me that you'd invited to your wedding. I didn't. Oh. Carrie invited her. I still have some reservations about Vanessa attending the wedding. Oh, well, I can well understand that. But uh, when you and Carrie were kind enough to invite me, I went ahead and asked somebody else because I didn't think that Vanessa would be here. Good, good. I'm delighted to hear that, Henry. Well, I'm not sure Vanessa will be. You see, I invited Mrs. Rin. Now, at first, B didn't want to come because she'd been a member of the jury at Carrie's trial. Oh, Henry, nonsense. We'd be honored to have her. I mean, after all, if that jury hadn't returned the verdict it did, there wouldn't be any wedding today. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, finally, I did convince her to come, but now her daughter Marines arrived from New York unexpectedly, and uh, B doesn't think she should leave her alone. Oh, well, that's no problem. Have her bring Marine along. As a matter of fact, Carrie has invited uh, Katie Parker and Tony Reardon, so Marine will have her mother there, her brother. She'll feel right at home. Well, uh, don't you think you ought to consult with Carrie about this? No, no need to do that. She's a very casual woman. That's what I love about her. <laughs> it's no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a case in point. Honey? Oh, I didn't know we had company. What a nice surprise. Oh, Carrie, I'm Hello. sorry to have barged in like this. Don't be silly. But I had a problem which uh, only you two could solve, and Ross has solved it for well, me. Well, he is definitely the man for the job. Yes, Henry invited B. Reardon to the wedding, and suddenly uh, Maureen, her daughter, showed up, and she doesn't want to leave her alone. And you told him to bring Maureen with him. Of course I did. Good. Oh, well. I'm glad you're bringing Mrs. Reardon, too. Good. This is a great day for all of us who are fond of you, too. I know you're going to be very happy. Thanks, Henry. Thank you. Henry. Goodbye, Carrie. Uh, well, goodbye, my boy. Goodbye. And I'll see, see you in church. <laughs> he is such a lovely man. Six hours. We're going to be husband and wife. Fine. You still haven't told me where we're going on a honeymoon, and I don't know what to pack. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, so, just some of the things you've been uh, wearing around the house lately. Sweaters and slacks? Yeah. Uh, warm coat, maybe a woolen shirt, gloves, boots. Skis? No skis. Woolen coat, gloves, sweaters, no skis. Thermal underwear. Flannel nightgown? Definitely not. <laughs> Mr. Mahler, you have certainly come a long way from the uptight, conservative man I met in a gray flannel suit who would have fainted dead away at the thought of someone... Come on, come no on. I wasn't on. that far out of it. Oh, really? 
All right, so maybe I was that far. <laughs> I admit it. He took a rather uptight man, made him into a romantic man. I'm head over heels in love with you for doing that. I wish you told me this yesterday, Mo, because I would have decked Nola right on the spot. No, I didn't want to say anything in front of Mom. Tony, I can't believe she still holds it against me because I went to New York and left her oh, here listen, to help Don't Mom. fall for any of that Cinderella garbage either, because the problem is Mom spoiled her rotten after we all left. Thanks. Tony, what's really going on between Nola and Mr. McCord out there? Uh, who knows? One day she says he's some creep trying to do terrible things to her baby, and the next day she's gaga about how generous he is sashaying around in her chinchilla coat. Oh, I hope she's not in over her head. God, I'd hate to see her get hurt. Yeah, don't worry about Nola. Whatever happens, she'll come out of it smelling like a rose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell you what, I think Mr. McCord and Mrs. Renfield are crazy. Did you see the way Nola was ordering Mrs. Renfield around? Well, that's why I asked. She's acting more like Mr. McCord's <clears throat> wife than one of the hired help. She used to be scared of Mrs. Renfield. You know, I bet she's got something on her she's holding over her head. Nola's a genius at finding stuff like that. Mm -hmm. She probably caught Mrs. Renfield and Fritz up on the third floor together. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to admit, they're the strangest two I've ever come across. <laughs> Good morning. What's the big deal, huh? Oh, we're just talking about Nolan, Ma. Oh. I thought it was something funny. <clears throat> oh, say, speaking of Nola, did you notice the way she was ordering Mrs. Renfield around when we were over there the other day? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hey, Floyd. How come you're not over to the hospital? Oh, well, uh, Josh called my boss, and they got him to let me off starting today. Oh, I'm so excited about you going to Hollywood. But tell me, who are the Sour Grapes, anyway? Oh, they're a, a real hot group out in Los Angeles. And, uh, in fact, they're going to be playing in Las Vegas while I'm out there, and Josh has arranged a side trip for me to go and hear them. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Maureen, uh, tonight uh, is going to be my last night at Wired for Sound for about a week, so I hope you can make it. Well, I think maybe I'll stay in tonight, Floyd, but I will come and see you when you get back. Oh, honey, don't stay in on my account. Oh, Mom, it works both ways. I don't want you staying home because of me, either. Well, I'm not exactly combing the invitations out of my hair. Chamberlain, oh, come on in. I'm sorry to walk in oh. like this, but uh, I couldn't get the bell to ring in the door. Yeah, I've been meaning to I'm fix that. Well. Take care of uh, yeah. uh, 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 Good morning, me. Good morning, you know, <laughs> Oh, uh, this is my daughter, Maureen. This is Mr. Chamberlain. Oh, uh, pleased to meet you, Maureen. How do you do, Mr. Chamberlain? Would you like some coffee? Oh, oh, no, thank you. I just came by to say that Carrie and Ross would like us to bring Maureen with us to the wedding. That is, if you'd care to come to. Uh... Oh, come on, Mo. Katie and I'll be there. We're going to have the reception over the hideout. She gets to meet a lot of new people. Mm. Well, it's very nice of you. Please, I... please, Maureen. You'd be doing me a great favor if you'd accept. You see, I asked your mother to go with me, but, uh... She doesn't want to leave you alone tonight. Hi, everybody. Oh, hey, how are you there, Hi, Tiger? Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, you know, I can't believe how much she's grown since the last time I saw her. Oh, neither can I, really. <laughs> you know, I thought I'd see you down on three. Yeah, well, I didn't have to come in quite so early this morning. I gave Morgan and I a little extra time. Wow. Whoops. Then when I did get in... <laughs> then when I did come in, um, I helped Dr. Zeff deliver a healthy baby girl. Aww. That's probably why you're looking so happy, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, diagnosis. Could you, by any chance, use a silver chafing dish? What are you talking about? Well, Vanessa gave uh, Morgan and I one as a wedding present. We never use it, and we don't really have that much room in the uh, apartment. So we were wondering maybe you could store it for us and uh, get some use out of it. Well, actually, Kelly, Vanessa gave me a chafing dish for my wedding well, gift also. But look, I could store it for you if you prefer. Oh, great. Right. Thanks, Floyd. <laughs> Floyd! Hey, hey man, how's it feel to be a celebrity? Hi, Floyd. Well, you ought to know. You're married to one. Well, now, what is all this about celebrity? The Sour Grapes are going to record one of Floyd's songs, and he is flying out to L.A. for the recording session. Sour That's Grapes. Right. I thought you were supposed yeah. to spend a leave of absence starting today, right? Oh, yeah, I am, Dr. Barr. You know, I didn't even know anything about it till last night. Oh. Well, excuse me, I got a few <laughs> things to take care of, and I want to talk to Leslie Ann. See you later. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hey, oh, yeah, let me hold him. Uh, I gotta let go of this. Hey, wait, gonna be a doctor. Teasing. Oh, teasing. Hi there, guy. You know, you look very good with a baby. Oh, yeah? I think that all that practice you're getting in OB is going to help a lot when you and Morgan decide a little baby of your own. Whoa, that had a little warmth. That's right, what's going to happen to Morgan's modeling career when you have a baby? Well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, having a baby like this little guy is still our number one priority. 
Where are you going? Yes, Mr. Briston, I can make it day after tomorrow. Okay, great. How long do you think it'll take? Hold on, someone's at my door. Hold on. Josh, hi. hi. Uh, come in, help yourself to some coffee. I'm on the phone. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. Okay, so how long do you think it'll take? Great, then I could take a plane back to Springfield that day. Okay, well, if there's any change of plans, don't worry, because I can stay at that uh, women's hotel thing. Kelly checked into it, and uh, they have single rooms on very short notice. Okay, great. I'm really excited about this. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Well, it sounds like you're off and running. Well, it's a start. He wants, Mr. Brisson wants to have professional pictures taken of me so that he can put them in my book, and hopefully I can get some modeling jobs. Hmm. What are you doing here? Oh, I need some, uh, some help. Some help? With what? Well, I never know what to get people for wedding presents, and, uh, well, I should get something for the wedding, and, uh, and Trish tells me she doesn't have time to help me out, so I was wondering if maybe you could come shopping with me and, uh, steer me in the direction of something that Ross and Carrie would like. Sure. Give me about five minutes, and I'll get myself Terrific. together. Terrific. Take your time. <clears throat> so, when are you, uh, going to New York? Uh, day after tomorrow. You're kidding. No, why? Well, that's, uh, that's the same day that I have to fly out to New York on business for Spalding. Maybe, uh, maybe we can go out on the same plane. Well, Henry and his two guests were at that table. Two? Two guests? Yes, when I was at Jackie's, Carrie called and said that Henry would be bringing two people, so we had to shift him to another table. Uh-huh. Who made up the arrangements? Carrie and Jackie. Mm-hmm. Might have known. These, please, go on that table, in front of the main dining table, and that is it. Oh, uh, got to call Jackie about one more thing. I'll be right back. Eve McFerrin. Edward Bauer. Mr. Henry Chamberlain and two mystery guests. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have a perfect view of the bride and groom. So happy I decided to help Trish with all of this. And I passed her vice behind the house and down I went. Oh, I'm so sorry. But I tell you, it makes me even more grateful that you made it all the way here from Wisconsin. Oh, you know we wouldn't miss your wedding. <laughs> oh, besides, now listen, we don't want to hold you up. You must have so many things to do. Oh, no, I'm all ready. We're having a very casual wedding this afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, I must say, you know, that day when you showed up at the farmhouse, I had no idea what kind of trouble Carrie was in. Or that it'd be ending up in a wedding. <laughs> and th thanks, Ross, for letting us you use your apartment. Nice there. Very nice. Oh, Elmer, you're welcome. But actually, that was uh, Carrie's idea. Oh. Well, I just thought that a hotel room was too impersonal for you two. Listen, I have a favor I'd like to ask you. I want more than anything to take Ross to the farm and show him every inch of it. Would it be all right? Oh, any time, dear. Thanks. Isn't that right, Elmer? Oh, you betcha. Any time at all. Oh, Listen, uh, at all. Carrie, I don't want to rush you, but uh, when do you have to be at Jackie's? You just have to be the calmest bride and groom I've ever seen. <laughs> I remember on the day I got married, I was ready. Excuse me, Ma, but I think it's about time for you and me to skedaddle out of here and let these young ones get ready for their wedding. I'll get your coat. It's going to be just like seeing my own daughter walk down that aisle. You go, Elmer. Thanks, Ross. Hey, yeah. you go careful, will you? Here we are. Take good care of yourself. Good now. luck, you two young lovebirds. Thank you. Thanks, Take Honor. care. Here, let me get you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> What's wrong? Seeing the Hempsteads just started me remembering. Started thinking about my grandparents, the farm, and Todd. We were at that farm when we decided to elope. Honey, I can't tell you how much it means to me to be able to say these things to you openly. Listen, 
I understood why well, you couldn't talk about it uh, when Dr. Hunt told me about Todd Jr. But there is nothing from now on that we can't talk about. Absolutely nothing. Can I tell you something I've never told anybody on this earth, including Dr. Hunt? I wish you would. I'd really like to see my son. Just once. Honey, wasn't it part of the adoption agreement that you would never do that? No, I don't, I don't, I don't want to meet him or, or talk to him. I just want to see him once with my own eyes. Wouldn't that be rather difficult for you? I don't think so. I've dreamt about it for years and years. Well, I think you're right. I better get to Jackie's now. All right. <clears throat> Listen, uh, I'll help you with your things, all right? All I have is a small suitcase. Where's your wedding gown? The Jackie's. I remember you told me that it was here. Well, it's a Jackie's now. You saw me in it once, and uh, I didn't want to press our luck anymore. I still don't believe that you're superstitious. <laughs> but I guess I will discover uh, more new things about you for the rest of my life. Huh? Better get going. Okay. Yeah. Like that? Need That's that. Okay. Drive carefully. I'll be over there with Mike. And... Smooch! Oh. Mm, thanks. All right, see you in a bit. Well, uh, I guess I'll uh, I guess see you, you later, okay? Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Oh, see ya. Come on. Yes, could you connect me with uh, Dr. Hunt's room right away, please? London? Why is Nola going to London, Mrs. Reardon? Well, uh, her employer has to go there on business, and he... You know, it's very complicated. Hey, everybody, look here. Oh, hey. Wow. Look at you. That's pretty. Well, I'm going to feel like something special walking into that chap with... Three of the best-looking ladies in Springfield uh, on my arm. Well, sure. You look real nice, too, Mrs. Peterson. How you doing? Well, I like this. In one room with four of the best-looking ladies in Springfield. <laughs> hey, guys, look who's here. Hi, everybody. How are you? Did you have a wonderful time? Great. It was great, thanks. What are you doing back here? I thought you were still on vacation. Yeah, I wanted to see Mrs. Town about my schedule for when I got back. No. Were you real surprised when we called you from Josh's party last night? Uh, surprise isn't the word for it, really. Uh, what was Josh's big announcement? Oh, well, uh, this rock and roll group called the Sour Grapes has decided to record one of my songs, and I'm flying out oh. to the session in Los Angeles, and then maybe to Las Vegas after oh, that. Oh, that's terrific. Congratulations, really. Thank you. Uh, oh, Ed, do you know where Mike is? Uh, either at his office or home changing for the wedding. Oh, uh, yeah, I need to give him a call. Well, I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, Hillary, hi. hi. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Sir, I'm sorry that Adam isn't going to be able to make it to the wedding. Oh, he is too, but Tim's going to stand in for him. Oh, good. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Right. Bye-bye, Doc. Hillary? How's everything? Oh, it was great. We had a wonderful time. And I think things are back to where they were before all the problems started. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about it. I think I'm going to make an appointment before I go back to work. Okay. Yeah. Good. Hello, Hi. Sarah. Oh, listen, I have to uh, stop by Mike's office just for a minute, and then we can go home and change. Okay. I'll let right down with you. Oh, great. Terrific. Bye, guys. Check you out later. Okay. Bye-bye. Don't work too hard, Leslie Ann. Hey, Derek. Oh, Hillary, so welcome here. back. It is so good to see your face. I really missed you. Hey, you even managed to get a tan, too. How'd you do that? Well, it was perfect weather. We had a good powder base, terrific sun. <laughs> yeah, nice, cozy, warm fires in the cabin. Yeah, that, that too. Yeah. Well, if we're going to go see Mike, we better get going, huh? All right. Well... And listen, Morgan, after the reception, wants to have people back over to the, uh, to the apartment, so uh, be sure and come, okay? Oh, great. Good. Bye. Bye. Floyd, hey, what are you still doing here? I thought you were on leave. Yeah, I am. Uh, but, but I got tonight off, too. I guess the reception is at the hideout, so they close wire for sound, too. Yeah. And Leslie Anna and I were just deciding what we should do tonight with my night off. Well, Morgan wants to have a group of people over to the apartment after the reception, so, I mean, we'd, we'd please oh, come. Oh, uh, thanks, Kelly, but uh, we were thinking maybe that we'd uh, take a drive in the country or something. Oh, yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll miss you. <laughs> Say, uh, would you mind, while I'm gone, uh, if you could check in on Nola and the baby a couple of times? Um, well, 
she's fine, Floyd. I mean, there's really nothing to worry about. Well, it's just that, you know, she's working so hard and she tends to overdo it. And she's working for Mr. McCord again, plus taking care of the baby. So I thought maybe you could just check on her a couple of times while I'm gone. I'll, I'll mention it to Dr. Sedwick. Okay. Oh, say, uh, Nola told me that she asked Gracie to, to be the godmother. And I think she's going to ask you to be the godfather. And uh, I feel the same way. Oh, thanks. Listen, why don't we talk about that when you get back from California, okay? Sure. Leslie Ann, listen, while this guy is gone, you're going to have to come over to our apartment for dinner. Oh, thanks, Kelly. I'd love to. <laughs> Josh has offered to uh, keep Leslie Ann from getting lonely while I'm gone, so that's great. Has Ross told you where he's taking you on, a, on this honeymoon? Nope. He just told me to take some warm clothes. I certainly hope I pack the right thing. Well, you know, you can always pick up anything you need when you get there. Carrie, what's wrong? I just started thinking about that suitcase I had when Ross picked me up at my grandparents' farm. Oh, Carrie, don't think about that. Not now. How can I not think about it, Jackie? Where did I get that dress? And what was I doing in a Chicago nightclub where that photograph was taken? That's why I ditched the suitcase in the ladies' room of the Milwaukee airport. Jackie, I really need you to be completely honest with me about something, okay? I, I know Justin has his reservations, but... Don't you think I'm wrong to marry Ross when I don't have an answer to all these questions? It doesn't matter what I think. Ross loves you, and he wants to marry you, and that's all that really matters But right your opinion now. is very, very important to me. All those weeks after Joe and Diane's death, you were the closest... Carrie! To... I don't want to talk about those weeks. Not today, of all days, when I'm trying so hard! Trying so hard to what, Jackie? We'd better get dressed now, or you'll be late to your own wedding. You think the uh, moment has arrived? <laughs> the wedding gown? Okay, fine. Jackie, what's the matter? Nerves, I guess. <laughs> this is the case where the matron of honor has more generous than the bride. I wish I could be as calm as you are right now. <sighs> Before we all leave, I want to announce that there'll be a meeting of all the department heads in my office tomorrow morning. I would like to go over every step of the annual stockholders meeting so that we each know our individual responsibilities. So... I'll see you all at 9 a.m. sharp. Nine? Excuse me, don't you think that's a little bit early? I mean, all of us are going to be at the wedding reception all night long. No, I don't. What you do with your spare time, Vanessa, is your business. The workday here starts at 9 a.m. Oh, uh, uh, Amanda, uh, do you happen to know to whom Alan's giving his proxy for the stockholders meeting? No, I don't, Henry. But I'm going to ask him at the reception. And if he doesn't know, I'm going to have him find out before he leaves on his honeymoon. Well, excuse me, Amanda, but do you think that's an appropriate time to discuss business? The last chance I'll have before he comes back, and by then it'll be too late. Anything else? One, one thing. I need to go to London and meet with our people there as soon as possible. Fine. Just contact Mrs. Hadley, and she'll make all your plane and hotel reservations for you. Oh, wait a minute, darling. Why don't you take the company jet? I saw in that memo that Wayne Jennings' license has been reinstated, and he's back on the payroll. Mm -hmm. I told Ross he could use the plane for his honeymoon. The company plane is for business. It was my decision to make, for... Vanessa, and I've made it. Look, I'm perfectly content to go on a commercial airliner. Thank you. All right, darling. Anything else? Fine. I'll see you all at the wedding. You about ready to go? Yes. Thank you. Oh, Amanda, I think I'll come with you. Fine. Mm. Daddy. Mm. Daddy, I heard this afternoon that you were taking two guests to the wedding, and I mm. thought... All along, you'd be coming with Mark and myself. Oh, well, I made other plans, dear. Darling, I wish you wouldn't constantly challenge Amanda on my behalf. I'm quite capable of speaking for myself. Darling, I'm so sorry. It's just that I, I love you so much, and I need you more than ever now with Daddy being so Vanessa, secretive Vanessa, and Vanessa, everything. Vanessa, Vanessa, do you suppose we could just enjoy the rest of the day without worrying about your father? 
I'll just tell my secretary I'm leaving, and uh, we can go. What? I'll wait here for you. You're ready to carry out my orders. Yes, indeed, and I'm counting on you to be there. Goodbye. I certainly am glad you uh, offered to wrap that yourself, otherwise we'd still be standing in that line of sims. Carrie and Ross are gonna love it. Well, I never would have thought of it if it wasn't for uh, having you along there with me. <sighs> Finished. It's beautiful. Thank you. I'll just uh, finish my cup of coffee and then I'll get out of your way. Yeah, it's after three o'clock. I had better start to get ready. Yeah, is Kelly changing at the hospital? Well, he's going to try and get back here and try to change, but if he's not here by 3.30, I have to rush back to the hospital, bring him his clothes, and then we have to make a mad dash to the chapel by four. I wonder if Kelly realizes how lucky he is to have such a beautiful wife and one who's willing to adapt to that crazy schedule so well. Well, we're both lucky, and we both know it. Well, I'm very impressed especially considering the divorce statistics these days. What does that have to do with Kelly? Oh, it's just that it takes a lot of guts for two people to make that kind of lifetime commitment these days with, uh, with all the odds against them, that's all. Well, Josh, statistics mean nothing to us, especially to two people who are in love as much as Kelly and I are. Yeah, I guess so. Just tell me something, just out of curiosity. Uh, Floyd and Nola at your wedding? Uh, no, they weren't. Oh, why not? I mean, uh, with you and Kelly being such good friends with Floyd and all... Uh, we are, but, um... Did it have some? Hi, Kelly. I'm glad you're home in time to change. Yeah. Hi, Kelly. I was just leaving. Uh, Morgan saved my life by helping me find a gift for Carrie and Ross the last minute. Yeah, great, great. Well, I guess I'll get going. Uh, thanks again for the help, Morgan. You're welcome, Josh. I'll see you both in church. Hmm. Right. How come uh, Josh uh, decided to ask you to help him uh, pick out a present? Well, because he asked Trish, and she was too busy, you know, with everything at the hideout and stuff. And you know how I love to shop. <laughs> and plus, Josh is so funny. Josh? Yeah, well, he has all the credit cards and checking accounts and charge accounts in the world, and yet he had no idea what to get Carrie and Ross. And you and I, who were living here on a shoestring, took us, what, 20 minutes to pick out a gift? And you will never guess what was the first thing Josh saw when he walked into Sims. Oh, what? A silver chafing dish, just like the one Vanessa got us. No. Yes. <laughs> you know, when I was driving over here to get ready for the wedding, I, it really reminded me of our day last August. God, I was so nervous. Did I ever tell you that I got dressed three hours before the wedding ceremony? <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh even said how lucky we are, and if... Carrie and Ross are as lucky and happy as we are, then they have nothing to be nervous about. Mm, he was right. Well, I guess we better start to get ready. And I have first dibs on the shower. Hey, wait. No, you don't. No, you don't. Get... What in the world are you... Need any help? Why would I? It's a boutonniere. <laughs> Bridegrooms have known to be nervous. Look at this. Steady as a surgeon. Doctor. Yeah, I know. I can't get it over. I mean, Carrie's the same way when she was over the house getting ready. I don't know about you two. You're going to take the record for being the coolest and calmest bridegroom, bride and groom in history. Uh, I don't know. But we thought this day would never come. Now that it's here, I think we're too grateful to be nervous. Well, um, look, there's something I wanted to tell you before... Uh, Mike gets here. I know that I've had my reservations about the timing of this wedding. But, uh, you and Carrie seem so sure of yourselves and so happy. How can I do anything except want to be part of that happiness? Ross, I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you, Jeff. Kid brother's still not too big for a hug, is he? Never. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Listen, uh... I know I've uh, disappointed you once or twice in the past, thinking my values were a little out of whack. 
But thanks to Carrie, I think I'm doing all right. Oh, that's another reason why I'm very happy for tonight. I hope that's my... There's that main man. You're looking good, buddy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, well, just as well yourself, you? Mike. That's very damn well. <laughs> So you're not even a bit nervous yet, are you? No. I'm just impatient. Can't wait to get to the chapel. Oh, uh, when I uh, drove up, there was some a young uh, kid came up to the door, and then uh, when I got out of my car, he'd uh, ran up the hill up behind the house. Oh, right? yes, and, yes. That's... Uh... That's Ron Kennedy. He and his parents, they live up in the main house, and Ron takes care of uh, the carriage house for Carrie. Now, Carrie won't believe me, but Ron has a real crush on Carrie. <laughs> I don't know, however, why we'd be wandering around now. You see, he and his parents are both invited to the, to the wedding. They should be on their way to the chapel. Yeah, speaking of that, now, do we have everything? Yeah, I'm sure we do. Got a ring? A ring? Uh, what ring is it? The ring. The ring. The yeah, ring. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Did you ever see a calmer bridegroom in your life? Yeah. Well, he and Carrie went through a lot to get this far. I guess that explains it. I guess so. Why are you wearing black? It's not exactly appropriate for a wedding, is it? Well, darling, it was the only halfway decent thing I could find in Springfield. I can't believe it. What is it? I'll tell you later. together to unite this man and this woman in marriage, which is an institution founded in nature 
ordained by the state, sanctioned by the church, and made honorable by the faithful keeping of men and women in all ages. It is therefore not to be entered into lightly or inadvisedly, but discreetly, advisedly, and with due reverence. This celebration is the outward symbol of a sacred and inward union of hearts, a union created by loving purpose and kept by abiding will. Into this estate, Carrie and Ross have come to be united today. In your marriage, no fetters for your spirits. Rather, may the courage which love alone can give guide your lives into a fuller strength and into a greater freedom. Love is a concern for the true happiness of the other. Love is a respect for the preciousness and worth of another person. Love gives and love receives. Love cannot live in itself. It must be nurtured with a mutual and ultimate sharing, a giving and a taking. Love is precious because it is an ethical commitment to another, which honors the duties of the promises made here today, not only from a sense of obligation, but also from the depths of the most giving sentiment a man or woman can ever experience. Ross and Carrie, is it in the spirit and for this purpose that you come here to be joined together? It is. It is. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. Join your right hands. Ross, do you take this woman to have and to hold from this day forth as your lawful wedded wife? I do. Will you love, honor, and cherish her at all times? and leaving all others cleave only unto her throughout the days of your years. I will. And do you, carry, take this man to heaven to hold from this day forth as your lawful wedded husband? I do. Will you love, honor, and cherish him at all times, and leaving all others cleave only unto him throughout the days of your years? I will. May I have the rings, please? These rings are a symbol of unbroken and unending love, of wholeness and perfection and peace. The rings you give and receive this day are the symbols of the love into which you enter as husband and wife. With this ring, I wed you and pledge my faithful love. With this ring, I marry you, and to you I will be true as long as we both shall live. For as much as Carrie and Ross have consented together in marriage, declaring their love for each other, they are now husband and wife. May their days be long upon the earth, and may they dwell in love and joy together. Ross, you may kiss your bride.
walking up the hill with Mike and our wedding and it brought back so many wonderful memories. You know, I feel a little left out since I wasn't at your wedding. Well, it was the complete opposite of Carrie and Ross's. I mean, theirs was very formal and beautiful, and Kelly and I decided to have ours up at Laurel Falls because it had so many special memories. Well, where is this place? I, uh, I still don't know my way around here too well. <laughs> it's the most beautiful place in the world. It's got a waterfall that falls into a crystal clear lake that people can swim in during the summer. Yeah, but that's just the romantic side of it, Morgan. The place is wall-to-wall Springfield you co <laughs> when the weather gets warm, Josh. Mm -hmm. Sounds like my kind of place. I'm going to have to check it out sometime. I think about the first warm day in May would be good. Uh, Derek, excuse me. Could I, uh, could I talk to you for just a second? Oh, sure, sir. Excuse us. Sorry. I, uh, well, I really wanted to talk to Mike, but he's, he's so involved, you know, with the wedding. And I know that you've been helping him track down this person that, that uh, Carrie feels has been watching her since the night she left Diane's apartment. I'll tell you the truth, we've hit one dead end after another on that. Mike managed to track down the woman who takes the photographs at the Flamingo Room in Chicago. And since there was an order number on the back of the photograph, she was able to dig up the negative. But unfortunately, that was the only picture she took of Carrie and the gentleman that was with her that night. Have you come up with something? Well, I, I'm not really sure, but I, uh, I think maybe Lieutenant Wyatt ought to hear this, too. Oh, all right. Well, let me get him just a sec. <laughs> Hello, Larry. Hi, Derek. Oh, See ya. Oh, this is my wife, Stella. This is Derek Colby. Oh, yeah. how do you do, Mr. Uh, Colby? Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> Uh, Larry, I hate to drag you away on business the minute you arrive, but Sarah McIntyre's got something I think you should hear. Sure. Excuse me. Larry, hi. Do you remember my wife, Stella? Yes, of course I remember. Hello, oh. Dr. Bauer. <laughs> There's someone who wants to meet you. I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Lieutenant Wyatt, but I, I was just about to explain something to Derek, and I thought uh, that maybe you'd want to hear it, too. It may be nothing at all, but it could have something to do with this person that Carrie Fields has been watching her and following her all this time. I... I feel sort of strange discussing at her wedding at her wedding reception. No, please go ahead. Mike has a theory that it might all fit into a plot against Helen Spalding. Well, I'm sure you noticed the moment when she hesitated coming down the aisle. Well, I noticed it. I assumed she was just nervous and lost her step. Yes, well, I thought so too at first. And then I, I saw this look on her face. Of course, I, I haven't had a chance to check it out with her, and I may be reading something in that just doesn't belong. But I thought that she was genuinely frightened. And, and just at that point, my eye was caught by, by something at the back of the chapel. And I turned and I looked, and there was a man standing. I mean, he, he was dressed in a, a raincoat, and he had a, the brim of his hat pulled down over his face, and he was quickly going out the door. Did you get a look at his face? No. But I thought that was very strange. I mean, why else would he be there except that he was invited to the wedding? And if that was the case, why would he be leaving just as the bride went down the aisle? Well, that is strange. That's very strange. Since this is our last group picture, I want it to be very special now with lots of smiles. Excuse me, uh, I thought I saw someone open the doors and look in a moment. No. Oh, well, that was probably the driver. He's going to take us to the reception after we're done here. Check. <clears throat> you ready, children? Yes. Okay, can I have those happy smiles just once more, Easy. please? That's it. Hold it. Hold it. One, two, three. That's it. I'll see you at the reception, and I'll have the proofs to you by the time you get back from your honeymoon. Oh, that would be fantastic. Thanks a lot, yeah. Mr. Trevor. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Gary, what's the <coughs> matter? That time when the flash went off, I suddenly saw a young woman in a costume taking my picture. Well, do you remember when or where you saw her? No, I, I just remember the woman taking my picture. But maybe it was that time in Chicago, Ross, and maybe it's all starting to come back to me now. Reverend, was that driver getting impatient? Or? That wasn't it at all. I talked to the driver, and he said he did see a man look in the chapel doors, but then apparently he turned right around and left. Huh. Hi, Judy. Hi. Where you two been? Amanda had an important phone call to make, and she wanted to check some things at the office. Oh, I thought so. I keep crossing my fingers that Kelly won't have to go back to the hospital so that he can stay here for most of the reception. 
Um, listen, now that I've gotten you all together, after the reception, I want to have some people over. Burke gave me a new recipe to try out, and I figured we can have a late supper and listen to some records or something. Well, why don't we wait and see how late this reception runs? Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Kelly. I mean, the problem with receptions is that uh, once you get them going and you get people in a party mood, then the bride and groom leave, and there goes your party. <laughs> Uh, Hillary, I'm counting on you to come and help me out, okay? Oh, I don't know. We're a little tired after that long drive from Pine Bluff. Why don't we just wait and see how we're feeling? Okay. Um, Tony, I switched my classes around at Springfield U so that I could take your karate class. Oh, well, good. Uh, looks like we're going to have a pretty good-sized class. Yeah, I'm going to sign up, too, Tony. Yeah, that's really cool. Hey. You get a couple of beautiful women in there, and you have every single guy in Springfield signing up. <laughs> I mean, of course, it is a... It is dangerous to teach females the art of self-defense, but since Morgan's going to be spending some time in New York, uh, couldn't be all bad. Don't even say that, Josh. Kelly's worried enough about it. <laughs> no, wait a minute. That makes two of us. Will you have to spend much time in New York, Morgan? Um, well, hopefully, I'll be, if I fly into New York in the morning, I'll be able to fly back that night. But uh, if by chance I should have to spend the night, Kelly and I looked at a woman's residency hotel, and I'll be able to stay there. Mother, I haven't gotten a chance to speak to you yet about it, but um, I'm going into New York day after tomorrow. Mr. Brisson called and set up an appointment to have some professional pictures taken. And Josh is going in that day, too, for business with Spalding. Really? No, no, you misunderstood me, Morgan. It's uh, business with uh, HB in Louis Vuitton. <laughs> now, where in the world is Daddy? I saw him leaving the church with Mrs. Reardon and her daughter, and he still isn't here. Vanessa, the wedding party's not even here yet. There's plenty of time. Well, at least I know now why he didn't tell anyone whom he was bringing to the wedding. Obviously ashamed. Vanessa, I don't agree with that for one minute. From the brief chat I had with uh, Mrs. Reardon and her daughter outside the chapel, I thought they were very charming people. They are. I like B. Reardon very much. Oh, Trish, really? I've heard of men his age entering their second childhood, but I never thought I'd live to see my own father do it. Excuse me, I think I'll see how things are going in the dining room. Oh, darling, don't go... Vanessa, I'd like to tell you something. You are acting like a spoiled child today. I can't help it. I told you this would be a very difficult day for me. I was only asked here as a courtesy. That's all the, uh, then you should act it. Darling, please. Don't be stern and disapproving with me. I can't stand it. Not from you of all people. Don't reject me. Darling, I'm not rejecting you. But we should be close enough to be able to tell each other when we disapprove of something that's going on. Would you just hold me, please? Just hold me. <clears throat> Kelly, I'm going to call the hospital. I'm going to check with OB for you. Why don't I go with you and speak to Dr. Sibley myself? Morgan? Uh, don't go away. I'll be right back. Oh, uh, hi. Ed, uh, this, is, uh, this is Nola's sister, Maureen. This is uh, Dr. Ed Bauer. Hi, nice to meet you, Maureen. Uh, Dr. Bauer is chief of staff at Cedar. Oh, well, it's a great pleasure to meet you, too, Dr. Bauer. We're just on our way to make a phone call, if you'll excuse us. Excuse me. Oh, it looks like we're the last people here. I'm sorry we had to go back and stop at the boarding house, but I really had to check on it. Oh, now that's all right. Hello, Hello everyone. Darling. You made it. Mm -hmm. yes, I hope we're not too terribly late. Oh, you're not. The wedding party isn't even here yet. It should be any minute, though. Good. Oh, are they coming down? Oh, well, no, I thought so. A man started to come in, and then he went right back out. He obviously didn't know the restaurant's closed this evening. Excuse me, please. Have your attention, please. Excuse me. Uh, as the best man, it is my pleasure and honor to be able to propose the first toast of the evening. And since there'll probably be uh, many more toasts before the evening is over, I would simply like to say that I've known the groom for uh, quite a long time now. Far longer than I've known the bride. But... During the period of time that I have known Carrie, I have developed a deep and abiding respect for her. So, to Carrie and Ross Marler, a toast to your deep and abiding happiness forever. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Now just sit down and have a good time. All right. <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling happy. A little breathless. It's been quite a day. I uh, did notice that the seating arrangement got changed. 
However, I'm not going to let it bother me. In fact, I'm not going to let anything bother me today. You know, my heart stopped when you were, you hesitated coming down the aisle with Justin. I think it was just nerves. I didn't pass very quickly. I was fine as soon as I saw your smiling face. Well, that's the way it's going to be from now on. Can I get a picture of that, please? The bride, the groom, the wedding cake, and the kiss. All right, all right, all right. Yes, yes. That's the easiest one you've asked me to pose for today. Excuse me. <laughs> Great. Now hold it for one more. <laughs> that was perfect. You're telling me. <laughs> I can't tell you how wonderful it's been for me to have you here. Every time I see your face, I feel your support, and I know that I have a right to marry Ron. You have every right. I told you that even before the jury brought in the good. You know, I had several strange flashes today. Almost as if some of those missing pieces are coming back to me. Yes, I noticed some of your reactions. I'm glad to know that it was that. I think it's a good sign. I hope when you get back, you'll continue with Sarah McIntyre. But if anything should happen that really troubles you, I want you to call me right away. I will. I wish you all the best, and I know it's going to be an incredible honor. How do you know? Well, uh, from the way Ross has planned everything else. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. I haven't had a chance to kiss the beautiful bride. Oh, I can remedy that right now, Henry. Gladly. Oh, I don't think you know Be Ridden. I don't, but I certainly remember seeing your face in the courtroom every day. I want to wish you every happiness. Thank you. Mrs. Marler. Oh, Marler. <laughs> Do you think I could speak to you alone for just a minute? Is oh, that all right? Sure. sure. Uh, Ross told me that in a, in a uh, murder trial that the jury's verdict has to be unanimous and I wanted to take a minute to thank you for whatever oh, part please, you played. You don't have to thank me. I realize that you and the other jurors know something about me that very few people on this earth know about my... Oh, please, I, I know what you're thinking. Look, I'm a mother too. I have seven children. I can assure you that nobody in that jury will say anything about what they heard. We all knew you were just trying to protect your little boy from the beginning. Thanks, Mrs. Reardon. I couldn't have wished for a better wedding present today. Carrie, I'm trying to keep you on schedule. Okay. Time to throw the bouquet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> They have your attention, please. We need all the single ladies in the center of the room so you can catch the bouquet. Now you are still single like I am, so don't be bashful. Darling, when have I ever been bashful? <laughs> okay, who else is there? Uh, oh, yeah. mm, great. Come on, Eve. It's bouquet time. You're still eligible. Aha. Uh -huh. Go on, Eve. Corey, uh, And you were introduced as a Reardon, and uh, you know a sister, so come on. Well, I don't really know anyone very well here. Come on, like get in there with the other girls all right, right now. Right, I love Excuse me. Sure. Oh, let's go. Come on. Okay, Carrie, you're all here. <laughs> all right, you're all here? Yes. Ready? Right. Yes. Now, wait a minute. I have to warn you. She has a wicked, over-the-shoulder hook shot. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody's ready? Ready. Okay. Yes. One. <laughs> Two. Three. You're going to be next, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the award-winning Guiding Light. Fashions provided by Lily Rubin Salon, South Southwest and Barney's. Wedding gown and veil by Priscilla of Boston.